Welcome. This is another installment of our Biblical Aramaic class. Last time we covered the preface materials and then we covered chapter one. And now we're going to look at lesson number two with uh, nouns and adjectives. And let's see what we can learn from this study. And the book uh, is on the uh, Biblical Aramaic and Biblical Hebrew page um, at hmisrael.com. And you can access that um, anytime you like and download it and follow along. So lesson two, nouns and adjectives. Gender and Biblical Aramaic nouns. And adjectives have two genders, masculine and feminine. There is actually no formal distinction between nouns and adjectives in biblical Aramaic. However, the katil and ketil types, I think these are verb types they're referencing here, are generally used for um, adjectives. Masculine nouns have no particular ending but feminine nouns generally end in, okay, so this is similar to biblical Hebrew here. Uh, feminine nouns in biblical Hebrew have this uh, kometz, hey ending, and then this could have like an aleph in it or a bet in there. Okay, and then um, you might have a hirik yod ending um, we can put a bet in there. Or you might have a shurik, which is an ooh ending. So as in biblical Hebrew, some feminine nouns have masculine forms, lacking a specific feminine ending. Uh, yad, hand, ayin, I. From these examples, it will be noted that in Biblical Aramaic and in Biblical Hebrew, parts of the body which come in pairs are feminine. Number. Three numbers occur in Biblical Aramaic, singular, dual, and plural. The dual ending is somewhat similar to that of Biblical Hebrew. Okay, so um, you've got this ending here. Patach, Yod, Hirik, Nun, Sophie ending. Uh, sometimes you might have this um, Saray, Yod, Nun, Sophie ending. Occurrences of the dual are rare in Biblical Aramaic and like Biblical Hebrew are almost entirely um, confined to natural pairs. Okay, I'll go down to state. In Biblical Aramaic, there are three states of the noun, absolute, construct, and emphatic. The first two function like their Biblical Hebrew counterparts and need little discussion. The emphatic state always denotes determination in Biblical Aramaic. It corresponds to the Biblical Hebrew noun in the absolute state with the definite article. Some grammarians prefer to state the matter in another way, namely that whereas the biblical Hebrew article is prepositive, the biblical Aramaic definite article is postpositive. For example, the king in biblical Hebrew, we have ha melech, ha melech. In biblical Aramaic, we would have malcha, malcha. Okay, so nouns and adjectives are. Uh, declined as follows. Okay, so we have the absolute state. Um, so here's an example of uh, melech for king. This is masculine singular. Um, Looks like uh, haiva, feminine singular, animal. Construct state is just melek, 
In other words, the base state, king of. Um, animal of would be chayvat. Here is the emphatic state, malcha, the king. Uh, if you've got the animal, you've got chayvata. Um, okay, now we've got the absolute state here. We've got malchin for kings. That could be malkin. That could be a um, vocal shaba, possibly. Malachin. Uh, how about animals? Um, Chai Von. That's absolute state. Construct state. Malchai, kings of. I think uh, we put these two sounds together, you get a diphthong. I think that's right. Correct me down in the comments if I'm wrong. Uh, animals of. Chaivat. Um, emphatic state. Looks like um, Malchaya or Malchai. Yeah, I think uh, this here and that. Malchaya, the kings, and looks like uh, Haivata, the animals. Okay. Note that the feminine plural construct ending, we've got this kametz tav, corresponds to the biblical Hebrew. Oh, look at this. So, so this is um, a lot of times in the, uh, in the Hebrew, the plural is uh, holem tav, so the ot ending. Uh, in this case, it's at ending in biblical Aramaic. Isn't that something? The original post-positive article, Aleph, is sometimes spelled hey. And conversely, the feminine ending, hey, is sometimes spelled Aleph. So some of these uh, letters, there, they switch around between Hebrew and um, Aramaic. So that's, that's really um, the task um, when you're studying the differentiation between the two. Nouns with the gentilic ending, we have um, Comets yod, C. Uh, we've got this rule up here. I think that's probably previously. And in uh, comets, we've got um, a yod with a sere and a la left. Ah, uh, looks like yai rather than ah, uh, ya in the emphatic state plural. Because the emphatic state is determinate or definite, it is used to indicate the vocative. So we have mal ka, maybe o king, as well as the king. Well, that's interesting. Mal ka, o king, as well as the king. For example, Daniel 2.29 and verse 21. Let's take a look at that if we can. Okay, let me share. And what we have to do with that is, um, let's get rid of these. There we go. All right, we'll go to Bible Hub. I like using Bible Hub because you can get the um, the Hebrew and all that out of there. Okay, so we're looking for uh, Daniel two twenty nine. All right, I've learned I have to write these out. Okay, so let's go to the interlinear. There it is. You, King Malka. 
okay? But it also can be, O king, you, O king, or you, the king. Thoughts on your bed came to your mind about what would pass after this. I think this might be Daniel telling the king what his dream was, if I remember correctly. Um, okay, what's the other one? We've also got Daniel 2.31. Let's take a look at that. Let's just see that Malka there. There it is again. Yep. Remember that this is written in Aramaic. Um, they're pointing this out. You, O king, were watching and behold an image, great image, this great and whose splendor was excellent stood before you and its form was awesome. Yeah. So this is Daniel recounting to the king. Um, he had been given the, the knowledge from almighty Yahuwah. All right. All right, so that's interesting. Let's go back here. All right, uh, so now we've got um, number four, adjectival modification. In biblical Aramaic as in biblical Hebrew, the adjective follows as closely as possible the noun it modified. It also agrees with the noun in number and gender, actual grammatical gender, not form, and in the state of determination. However, the predictive adjective is always in the absolute state. This is true whether it is used with some form of the verb to be or whether it occurs without the verb to be. Thus, the predictive adjective will agree with the noun it modifies in number and gender, but not necessarily in state of determination. Also, a predictive adjective may occur either before or after the noun it modifies. Okay, the construct chain. This is a combination of nouns peculiar, uh, peculiar to Semitic, in which the first noun, nomen regens, is put in the construct state, and the second, nomen rectum, is found in biblical Aramaic. I think those are Latin terms, either in the absolute or in the emphatic state. The state of the nomen rectum uh, indi indicates the determination or the indetermination of the whole construct chain. A construct chain may be more than two nouns, three or even more, but all except the last must be in the construct state. The determination or indetermination of the last noun, nomen rectum, governs all the nouns of the construct chain, no matter how long the construct chain may be. Now, I think what they're getting at here is, I've seen this in Hebrew too, where you have one, let's say you've got a sentence of five or six words, okay? and a tense on one affects the tense of all the other ones in the chain. So that's essentially what they're saying. Um, it, it changes, it makes these, these changes to reflect the tense of which or the gender or whatever it is, uh, the, the, whether it's plural or, or, or um, singular, that kind of thing. I think that's what they're dealing with here. There are three con constructions in which a construct chain is definite or determinate. When the nomen rectum is in the emphatic state, when the nomen rectum is made determinate by a, a pronominal suffix, or when the nomen rectum is a proper name. Thus, we have melic, um, let me get my pen. We have melic uh, paras, melic paras, uh, the king of Persia. So that in, um, in Aramaic, Persia is Paras. We've got that Samic there. Uh, Ezra, let's clear this up a little bit. Okay, so Ezra 424, we have Melek Malkaya. Um, that, I wonder if that's a, I might, might be Malkaya because of that uh, yod there. I think I see a yod under, or, or a uh, heric underneath that yod rather. A heric is just a dot. It's a long E sound, long E. Mal Malkaya, uh, the king of the kings.
Okay. Uh, in Ezra 7, 12, usually rendered by the English idiom, king of kings, we have uh, Beit Malka, the house of the king. In Ezra 6, 4, we have um, Haivat Bara, the animals, which are a collective of the field. Or um, Haivat um, Bara, maybe. Okay, so that's Daniel 2, 8 and 4, 9. Okay, so number six, we have the uses of Lamed. When the last element of a genitive construction is determinate in one of the three ways discussed above, emphatic state with the pronominal suffix, a proper name, the first element can only remain indeterminate by employing a circumlocution uh, in Biblical Aramaic, as in Biblical Hebrew, the preposition lamed is used for this purpose. Okay, so we've got melech, la Yisrael, rav. Okay, so we got king of Israel was great, the great king of Israel. Okay, Ezra 5, uh, 11. A great, a great king, a great king, yeah, because there's no ha melech there, a great king of Israel. Okay. It is extremely important to note that biblical Aramaic uses the preposition lamed to indicate the direct object. Isn't that something? So That, um, in, in, I think in Hebrew, it uses the term et, alef tav, as a direct ob object marker. But in biblical Aramaic, they use a lamed to indicate the direct object, in addition to retaining the common uses for lamed. In other words, lamed is a lot of times used as a preposition two or four in Hebrew. But now in Aramaic, it also has an additional task of indicating the direct object also found in Biblical Hebrew, to express the indirect object, the ethical data, purpose, and direction. The student of Biblical Aramaic must determine syntactically by the context whether lamed is expressing a direct object or an indirect object. Interesting. So the direct object, okay, we've got, um, Yod, Kametz, Tav. All right, in Biblical Aramaic, the following object is often expressed by the noun or pronoun alone, as well as being in indicated by the use of the preposition Lamet, see section six above. In this connection, the one occurrence of the particle Yat used as the sign of the direct object should be mentioned. The usage of Biblical Hebrew is et. Remember I said that? The direct object indicator, et. It's of the particle used as a sign of the direct should be mentioned. Okay, so sometimes maybe they're using this, possibly in Aramaic. In this one passage, Daniel 3.12, yat is attached directly to the third person masculine plural pronominal suffix. Okay, well, I'm curious about that. Let's take a look at that. That's Daniel 3.12. All right, so what are we looking for here again? We're looking for these tests, uh, so this calmness. Okay, let's see here. So it's going to be yacht home. Okay. There it is. Right here. Okay, so they're saying that this is, in this case, is functioning as a direct object marker. 
uh, whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon. Okay, interesting. Let's just take a look at this real quick. Mark of the accusative, there it is. Untranslatable mark of the direct object or accusative. Wow. Okay, so that's a difference um, in, in very, very rare occurrences in Aramaic. All right. Okay, so let's go down to uh, vocabulary. Okay. Uh, some of these are similar to, to um, uh, Hebrew, and um, some of them are going to be different, probably. Uh, here's Av, Father. Uh, looks like Ella, God. Instead of Elohim, it's Ella. Uh, well, I've seen Eloha uh, before. Um, Alaf, a thousand. Uh, Bena, to build. But ale, owner, lord. Whoa, look at that. But ale, that sounds like Baal, doesn't it? Uh, in Hebrew, in Aramaic, it's but ale. Uh, basar is flesh. I think in, in, in Hebrew, it's basar. Um, gavar, man, looks like keva, beast or animal. I think uh, behema in Hebrew. Um, looks like, uh, I don't know whether this is Hokim or Hakim because, well, it's going to be, it's Hakim for sure. That's not a Patak. That's not a Kometz Hatu. That's a Patak. It's Hakim, wise. Yad, hand. Yada. Okay, you dot to know. Um, yeah, looks like yahil to be able or prevail. Yat, sign of the direct object. Okay, there it is. Uh, Kama, how? Um, Levav, heart. I think, um, gosh, that looks similar to. Um, Hebrew there. Uh, it might be love of, yeah, more of an odd sound on the beginning of Mohammed there. Okay, we've got met a uh, hundred uh, malaf. Huh. Isn't that something? It's malach in Hebrew for angel. This is malaf. No, it's, uh, I'm sorry, that's not a fey. That's a, that's a, a, a chafsofit. Malach, Malach, angel. Malka, queen. Looks like uh, looks like Nahash, copper bronze. The fall to fall. Safar, book. I think it's Sefer in Hebrew. Um, Avad to do. Asab, herbs, uh, grass, parzil, iron, lame, statue image, tipar, bird, uh, kadish, look at that, instead of kadosh, it's kadish for holy or uh, set apart. Looks like um, Raish. That looks like it's Zeray there. So it's A-Y sound, Raish for head or cheap. In Hebrew, it's Rosh. Here's a, uh, look at this here. This is Shum for name. And in Hebrew, it's Shem with a Zeray. Zeray, uh, um, and they've got a Kibbutz on here, Shum for name, uh, for, for Aramaic. Sharosh, root. Okay. See if we can uh, finish up the rest of these here. Now, uh, let's see, where do we end at? 
Yeah, I think we did a hard. Um, uh, lay, 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 maybe. Night. Nama, why, for what purpose? Uh, or last, maybe. Uh, let's see here. Uh, root. Oh, we did that one, right? Um, Sharosh. And Tekot. Or under. I think Tekot in Hebrew is under, if I remember correctly. Okay, so this is translate the following round. Okay. Uh, well, let's we're, we'll do the best we can here. Um, if I miss something, put it down in the comments for me. Let's see here. We've got Malakim, Kadishim. Looks like um, the Holy Kings, maybe, possibly. Uh, Sifara, Sifar, let's see, Sif. Raya, Kadoshim, Kadishim, Kadishim. That looks like the holy books, maybe. Okay, Rosh, Talma, Tahav. I think that might be gold there. The head, this is head, Ray or Raish, rather, Salma. We got to figure out what this one is. Salma. Uh, look at our vocabulary list here. Uh, Salma. Well, I'm not finding that one. I'll move on. One of the things you learn when you're studying this kind of material, don't spend an inordinate amount of time hunting and seeking. Um, you want to get what you can out of it and then move on to the next thing. And that's uh, that's actually a musical thing. My mom was a, uh, my mom is a, a, a very accomplished pianist. And um, I did a, a little bit with music and, and singing as well when I was younger. And whenever you're studying dense material, um, you can get discouraged if you hunt around for something forever. Um, I would just encourage you to follow, follow that advice that just go over it and go to the next thing down the road, it'll become clear to you, okay? All right, uh, let's see here. We were doing uh, that one there, number four. Let's see what we can get out of here. That's uh, good, good to know. Gavora, Givra, Shamahat, yeah. and Ta. Well, I don't know. That, that looks like to know the great Shamahat. But the answer's down there if you know them. Abad, Elah, Le, Ar, Ah. Okay, that um, might be to cross over uh, all right, to the land, maybe? At least to the land? Kema, uh, Nafal, Avna, Al, Ne, Hasha. All right. Uh, Let's go down to five here. But ale. Uh, Hakim. Nia. Av. Malkata. Malakata. That's something to do with the king. The father, the father of the king. Okay, oh, okay. let's go to number seven. Yada. Basar, now that's meat, I think, flesh. 
Ul Bav Ana Ana Sa right? sounds similar to Men Parzel. Okay, number nine. Yakil Nevia Bale Bale Leia. That's night something there. And all this is this looks like all and all the prophets. Belil and night, maybe. Elef Alfin Torin Matayin. Okay, uh, Lama, who, uh, that's he. Ra, Tehot, Isba, Tehot Isba, Bana, Malka, that looks like the queen, maybe, or the, or the king. Bana. That might be, I wonder if that's son of the king. Hello. Bait, bait, the house, in the house. La, see, raya. Okay. All right. Let's see. I don't know what they've given us the answers here. Now let's move on and see what we get here. Okay, no. And I don't have the answer key to this book. Um, if you were to hunt and, and find them, I'm sure you could take the time to do so. Uh, but go ahead and um, see what you can come up with. Um, I'd like to see uh, if you see this and you're doing this, uh, share your answers with me. All right, so uh, that is um, lesson two. Um, next time we're gonna be doing lesson three, independent personal pronouns and suffixes on nouns. Okay, well, um, as always, uh, I'd like to show you our website here. Uh, let me go to uh, HM Israel. Uh, we've got a lot of materials here uh, for you guys. And um, we got your Hebrew and Aramaic studies here. I've got quite a few books here now. I'll probably put that third uh, video here for you guys. Uh, I've also got some Imperial Aramaic stuff here. I've been kind of curious about that. Maybe I'll start that at some point. Uh, also, uh, if you feel so led, you can certainly donate to us uh, here, send PayPal to shulhmisrael.com to uh, help uh, cover expenses for the Zoom room and website hosting costs and other things. So with all of that, I want to um, wish you or bid you good studies. And um, until we meet again, um, shalom, shalom.